Hi, I'm Preston DeGuys, and in this video, I'm going to step you through two PPDM recovery scenarios for VMware virtual machines, complete VM recovery and file level recovery to another host. We'll start with the complete VM recovery. Once you've logged on to PPDM, you can start a recovery by going to Assets under Recovery in the left-hand pane. In this demo, I'm going to recover the virtual machine 2K Pro to a different ESX server than it was backed up from. Once you've selected the virtual machine that you want to recover, click the Restore button to start the process. At this screen, we're prompted to select the backup copy that we want to restore from. By default, PPDM will restore from the most recent backup of the virtual machine. But for each virtual machine you've selected to recover, you can, if you want, choose a particular backup to use for the recovery. I'm just going to recover from the most recent backup, so I can click Next to continue. On this screen, you can choose whether you want to restore entire virtual machines or individual virtual disks. I'm just going to restore the entire virtual machine. Here we choose the recovery type. There are three options. Instant access is where a read-write snapshot, if you will, of the virtual machine backup is presented to the vSphere environment via a temporary NFS data store. A copy restore creates a new VM to any ESX host that you choose. An overwrite restore restores the VM over itself. This can be particularly useful for disaster recovery purposes as PPDM uses change block tracking to speed up the recovery. Any block in the backup that matches the current VM state is not recalled. We only recall the blocks needed to get the VM back to its state at the time of the backup. I'm going to do a restore to a new VM. Here I choose where in the vSphere cluster I want to restore the VM. First the data center, then the ESX server, and finally the data store itself. I can even configure whether restored disks should be thickly or thinly provisioned. Now I provide a name for the virtual machine, optionally choose to enable instant access for the recovery, and decide whether the VM gets reconnected to the network. I'll disable instant access for this recovery. On this summary page, you'll see the details that have been chosen for the recovery. If you're happy with all the options, you can click Restore to start the recovery process. PPDM tells us when the restore has been started and offers to take us to the jobs page to keep an eye on the process. PPDM takes you to the jobs page, filtered for currently running jobs, and you can see the restore in progress. Clicking the document icon next to the job lets you see more details about the recovery job. With the recovery underway, we can switch the view to the vSphere web client if we want to, in order to see what steps are being taken within the VMware environment. And you can see the recovery progressing here. That concludes the image-based recovery. Stay watching now to see a file-based recovery to an alternate host. Now, moving on to the second part of the video, I'm going to show you how to perform a file level recovery from an image-based backup to an alternate virtual machine. This recovery starts with me logging into PPDM and switching from the dashboard view to the recovery assets view. I'm going to do a file level restore from the 2K Pro virtual machine. To start a file level restore, select the virtual machine, and then instead of clicking the restore button, click the view copies button.
In the recovery view, click the DD button for the data domain you want to recover from. I don't have any clones, so there's only the primary copy data domain. Once I've clicked through, I can choose to do a file level recovery. Here I choose where I want to recover my file or files. I can recover back to the same virtual machine, I can search for a virtual machine by name, or I can browse the vCenter server to find the recovery destination. I'm just going to type in the virtual machine name. As I type the VM name, PPDM populates a list of matching virtual machines, and I can choose the virtual machine I want to recover to using the radio button next to it. I now need to provide the login credentials for the target virtual machine. Recovery to a virtual machine works with a small FLR agent, which you can either have uninstalled after the recovery completes or keep installed. Unless you have security requirements, I'd recommend leaving the FLR agent installed after the recovery. Once you've entered the login credentials, you can click the Start Mount button to allow the recovery target to mount the backup. Once this is complete, you'll be able to click the Next button to continue. Now we can choose the file or files that we want to recover from the backup. Note here that we're browsing the virtual machine that we are recovering from. On the next screen, we'll choose where we want to recover to on the destination machine. On this screen, I'm browsing the live file system on the recovery target. I'm going to expand out the folder structure, then create a new folder and elect to recover to that location. On the summary page, I can confirm the details of the recovery that I've configured. Since I'm satisfied with the configuration, I'll click restore to start the file level recovery. I can click Go to Jobs if I want to watch the recovery process. The virtual machine I'm recovering to is the one I'm running this demo from, so I can also open up an Explorer window and go and find the recovered file. Because we'd already mounted the backup, all the recovery had to do was copy the files across, and you'll see here how that's effectively already been done. Here's the temp directory, and within that, the file that we wanted to recover. Switching back to the jobs view, you can see that nothing is running. The recovery has completed. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe to the channel and keep an eye out for new demos.